pretty matchy-matchy. Howdy, lads and lassies. Welcome back to the channel. We got something special for you today. This is Tony Durbano, better known as Tony D. This is his amazing new van. And this is his trailer, his off-road capable trailer. Now, we're gonna do a nice fun walk around in this trailer. Here we go. What's up? This is the Romer trailer, and this is the Wubba. Cheers. Is that your Wubba? Who makes My yours? Wubba. Grizzly. This is an Amazon one made by Reduce. R-E-D-U-C-E. -E. So it's taking a few hits on it too. Let's this see. is, yeah, this thing's kind of infamous with my friends. Yeah. Well, I found it in my garage a few times. Yeah, it, it's also infamous because <laughs> it gets left everywhere. I've been through probably like five or six of these and this one's disgusting right now. Uh, but Maybe the straw might, you might want to look into replacing it. I don't think it's supposed to be <laughs> it's that It's all color, cracked too. Or that color. <laughs> because I sit there and I like slam down on the ice yeah, as it gets that. all like too split. Early. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, today I wanted to show you the Romer trailer. Now, the trailer thing for me spoke to me and a while ago, you hit me up and you're like, hey man, you got space at that house in Arrowhead? And I was like, yeah. You're like, you want, you want to keep a trailer there? And I was like, can I use it? And for me, where it spoke to me was hunting. So when I went hunting last year's elk camp, uh, and I'll throw a photo of my truck in it here now, the setup looked dope. And it had all this cool stuff on it, but I was heavy especially with all the ice I was packing, and then you throw an elk in the cooler, add another four or 500 pounds on it. You know, it, it, it was aggressive. It was like, I hit the off-road mode on my air suspension, and it was like, nope, like it wasn't happening. <laughs> no thanks. And then on top of it, I get home, and I don't want to drive around with all this crap on my truck. Like, look at me, I'm an overlander. And that's cool if you're into that, like right on. I'm not. Sometimes I have to drive clients in my truck and things like that. So I usually am pulling everything I have on it off. And then when I saw this thing, it was like, oh, if I want to go hunting or camping with my kid, I can just, everything's, everything's here. I don't have to right. have any, all this stuff is what a lot of people have strapped to their Jeeps and trucks and everything. And you just kind of grab the trailer and go. And that that spoke to me yeah. so it's about 75 percent ready to go yeah while sitting still in your garage like you don't need a lot to like i can't imagine at least looking at it for me i can't imagine what i would have to add to this like you have everything on this i could i could want really yep. so um so tell us the trailer what's the story on this thing and how did this thing come to be yeah well this is a free spirit recreation off-road trailer they have uh, a few levels of trailer. We went with the maxed out version. In its stock form, it's gonna come with the uh, fender flares and you can add the um, steps on both sides, front and rear, just for extra accessories if you need to stack something and strap it down. Um, we opted on this for the upgrade of the risers for the tent. Um, this one gets your tent higher off the ground so you can then when you erect the tent, you can still hang out underneath of it, create some shade, create some um, shelter from uh, rain. Uh, it also gives you the ability to store more stuff in between the, the um, tent and the trailer, as well as numerous mountain options, which we'll get into here. Yeah. Um, but at base level, that's kind of it. It's kind of like your base camp. And as we mentioned already, uh, it's 75% there sitting in your garage. You're pretty much topping off with water, topping off with any, any of the goodies in the fridge freezer, which you'll see in a moment. Um, and then off you go. Okay. Now, having a trailer as far as like off-road capabilities, I mean, you guys have some really amazing builds, but you know, a, a couple buddies of mine were worried about being able to get places. And I was like, well, your truck fully loaded with all that crap, that's going to limit you as well yeah. on the weight side of things. So I'm like, anywhere you can get to with your truck, at least the guy I was talking to had a 1500 Rebel with 35s, right. pretty capable vehicle. Yep. But when he puts all his stuff on, he's heavy. And he's like, I feel top heavy, like going over rocks. And you know, is it like made to go on the Rubicon? No, probably not. But you're not gonna take something like this there. But like for my purposes going hunting, I'm not going across the Rubicon to go hunting. But I am on some good trails, but I don't think, I don't think I've been anywhere in my pickup at least 
where I couldn't take this. Have you seen the limit, right. the limitations on this? I mean, your With, builds are made to do a lot more than. Yeah, it's going to depend on what your base platform is. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're talking about the 1500 Rebel, the truck is going to be the limiting factor. Yeah. On that, the trailer is going to go behind it. You're probably not even going to know it's there, which could be a benefit or a curse. Uh, for getting it's back there because it's so light. I mean, even weighted down, it does have some weight to it. It has a pretty substantially sized tent on it, along with uh, five gallons plus of water, some extra fuel if you decide to swap out the can, and, and all, all the other goodies, fridge, freezer, and all of your food. Um, however, you know, and we could probably post a picture um, in on this with it behind one of our old Tundras. And uh, again, the Tundra had no business being where it was in this photo, let alone a trailer behind it. Um, but the trailer really wasn't a limiting factor at all. It was more of the truck. Now, if you get into a rock crawler or something like that, then, then yeah, the, the, the trailer could be a the factor in that. But it's a trailer, so really, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. You know, but it will it will go over and through some stuff pretty good. Um, more yeah. than it probably should. At least for us, it has. Yeah, and at least for my. <sighs> Not so much capabilities, but for what I want to do off-road, um, I haven't been up or around anything that, like, I haven't seen anything that was like, oh, I can't go there because of the trailer. Yeah. You know? Um, it depends on what to... you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to do a through <coughs> trip, point A to point B? Are you doing a loop? Or are you going someplace where you can set up base camp and take the rig yeah and then come back to the trailer that's probably the biggest thing and benefit of something like this is because you're not setting up your base camp off of your main travel rig and then having to break it down in order to do a trail run and then come back to reset it back up here you can kind of post up yeah. drop the trailer set it up and then do your do your uh, adventures during the day your trail runs during the day and come back home to the trailer already set up yeah that's what uh, a, a buddy of mine rob he does a big trip up in northern california and i guess the area he goes to i forgot the name of it it's something falls but it's supposed to be the gnarliest like he's like it's moab on steroids bro like you have no business being out there unless you're in these type of vehicles when he saw me pull this into my driveway he was like what's that you know because he's always trying to pack everything in his crazy gnarly jeep and now he's like and then they unpack it and then they have to pack it all up and pull yeah. it out he was like oh wow this will this will get to like some of our camp spots that we can't get to and uh it'll I can definitely just, take the, especially when I you're traveling leave it there especially when you're traveling with a jeep because you know it's very it doesn't take much to overload those things not mm -hmm. from a capacity standpoint but from a space you know there's not much volume in, inside one of those to pack up so just i know and having a Jeep, many, many Jeeps, but even back in college, I had a TJ, and whenever I moved in and out, like I was driving in the cocoon for five hours to get back home to mom and dad, <laughs> yeah. you know? And like, it's just not a fun way to do a long road trip. You know, you can load this up with the majority of your things, have a few things in the Jeep, enough room for the dog and the, and the kids or whatever, and it takes the edge off, you know, that road trip and the stress of that. That's awesome. Well, let's go through kind of how you set this thing up. First and foremost, this is rhino line. Rhino line, yes. Uh, this was rhino line to match one of our previous Jeep Gladiators. Uh, well, Hatchet, which Hatchet. we have a video on. If you yep. haven't seen it, go back and watch the video on Hatchet. I'm sure you could do something like post a link or, or I'm something sure. back to that. Yeah. There's some science. I don't involved. know how, so if it hasn't happened, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so this really protects. I mean, these the trailers come powder coated, um, which is fine, but this kind of makes it indestructible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that stuff's not coming off. It's going to protect it from tree scratches and, and uh, pinstriping and things like that. Um, and it looks cool. It's it, super durable. It looks. Yeah. You don't. Re it's hard to see. I'll try to put some B-roll in of it, but you walk up on it, it looks just like a gray trailer. But then you get close, you're like, well, what's that? And you touch it, and you're like, oh, right, a little like you texture and, and, the whole uh, thing and touchability to it. Yeah, but it, uh, it's a pretty nice coating, and we're so fond of it. We're just we're trying to rhino line everything. Yeah, no, that's me right yeah. now. I'm Coffee like, cups. And can I'm, you rhino line a helmet? The dude's <laughs> like, yeah, but I think that would kill the weight of your. I'm like, okay, bad idea. How about the visor? He's Have like, you seen my neck? Have you seen it? <laughs> he was like, I was like, how about the visor? And he was just like, dude. Yes, I can do anything. And I, I, he said he would do it. He did a wubba for me. Right. And I lost it. I'm so bummed. Anyway. Yeah, too bad you couldn't have lost that gnarly one. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it actually might have been taken from my truck. But anyway, uh, moving up. So what is in here? 
So in here, um, there's not much to see here. I can crank it open if you yeah, know go over there. Um, this is just where we're stashing our um, batteries. Oh, wow. So okay. we have some electrical power in here um, via two Odyssey batteries. And this will kind of take care of the fridge, uh, freezer, and we can hook up. We have connection points for solar panels just to kind of keep it juiced up. And it sits on a trickle when it's at home in the garage. Part of that ready to go. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And it looks like you have your, this is all your connectors here for the trickle charge. And uh, is that a shore power as well? Shore power as well, yep. Wow, that's awesome. And then these, I just learned about these. These are cool. Propane tanks. <laughs> yeah. um, I forgot who makes these. I think it's Trident, um, but it's like that's a right. composite propane tank that's really lightweight. Yeah. Like, like a third of the weight of normal propane. So, um, so you can put two on there. It's not that. It's not a terribly big deal. Yeah, and then working you up. You need two, eh, but I mean they stack. So why wouldn't yeah, you? Tell it, I mean, it's just <laughs> yeah, why not? You know, you never. And then you, it's less trips to, right, to right, fill up right. propane. Um, and then, at, just like on hatchet, the old road shower. Yeah, the old road shower um, filled up. You fill it up off of uh, the street uh, tap, and then uh, it'll pressurize, and, and you can also uh, add more pressure to it. Um, just to clean up you know we have a shower curtain you can get showered up get cleaned up after your hunt or after your hike or whatever um just enough water for you know the weekend yeah i didn't think i'd want a shower on my elk hunt but it was seven days in the back country <laughs> and it was i was real freaking well actually the first thing was my hair i wanted to wash my head because yeah. it just was like getting itchy and dandruffy and stuff and i was like i and i had a little pump shower thing that barry gave me but I instantly was like, this sucks. And my friend Jim, uh, what's up Sutherland? I know you watch this. Um, he has one, it's the only thing he has on his forerunner, but he surfs every day. Right. So he's like, I just fill that thing up like once or twice a week, man. And the second, it, he says it gets kind of warm, gets kind of hot cause it's black. Yep. And uh, he's like, man, the water's always nice. It's warmer than yeah. the water I just got out of usually. That, it makes for a good, for his purposes, it makes for a good transition back to work just to rinse the salt off you. Yeah. Uh, in your situation, like, yeah, it may not be the best shower after humping through the bush for seven miles. But it's for the a day, shower. But it's a shower and it helps you feel a little bit more of a human. Yeah. Um, after a long day like that. So definitely rinse off get the gunk off you yeah and then i saw so moving up you've got a lot of different mounting solutions here which is really cool i like this little grid like yep. i could even i mean you know me man i like to like custom do things and get my grinder out and start making things but when i saw this pattern i was like oh wow i could literally figure out how to mount anything yep. to this but yeah exactly so i mean all your roto packs your mat max tracks your outer limit say uh, first aid kit all that just bolted right to it with the mounts. Um, it just lets you accessorize the hell out of it. Yeah. For anything you wanted to bring. And it was cool. Like this, you've got enough space here. You could really, I mean, you could really do up with roto packs or even jerry cans. From yeah. looking at it, it looked like they would fit here. Yeah. The um, the road shower can easily be moved someplace else. If you don't need it to be hitting the sun for heat, you can always do it the underside of the uh, Pioneer platform from Rhino Rack mm -hmm. um, and free up more space here. Go deeper on the Max Tracks. These little guys from Max Tracks are nice. Um, they're plenty big for the trailer, but then we also use them for leveling. If oh, need. So okay. You can definitely get two, four, six of these and use them for leveling uh, for camp situations. Um, so you can definitely lose this, bring the mounts out, double, triple stack some of the cans, um it's the sky's the limit it's a giant tinker toy yeah um i kind of wish i had these smaller max tracks because i still haven't used my max tracks for myself yet but lots <laughs> but and they've lots been used lots and lots yeah. of people in the snow and when i first saw these i was like they make small ones it's like i used, wish i just had yeah. the small ones because i most of the time it's just somebody's stuck in the snow in the mountain and i just throw it under the tire that's spinning and they just rent and around, come right out but sometimes more times than not that's all you need is just a little extra traction and yeah and the sky's the limit on what you can use them for i mean i've used them like you've never used them for yourself you used them to, to extract others yeah we've used them for everything from leveling to tables if we need them um, that's for, smart they've gotten used for a bunch of different things so they're always kind of handy to have yeah and any water problems on the outer limit stuff nope nope i've heard great things about them i've just never yep and this one, them. this one's a company with their quick release. So 
I actually have one of these at home too uh, in my garage and I've taught the kids to make sure they know how to use it. Mm. But it has a, a pull at the bottom. Give it a quick yank, it's gonna disconnect. It's a quick connection kit oh. with a magnet as well. Um, and so it's quick release. That's and again, awesome. thankfully, never used one of these for ourselves, but a lot of times you are the closest thing to an accident. Yeah. And if it's not you performing care, there's potentially someone else that's performing care. And to have a kit, we always like to keep the kits on the vehicles. I've had, I, I, on the medical thing, and you guys have heard me talk about it on here, but twice now on the motorcycle, I've had to work on motorcycle accidents. One was really bad, one was just minor scrapes mm -hmm. and everything. Could have been bad, but it, it wasn't, luckily. And I've been at the range when somebody was shot. I've been in my car three times now, I counted the other day, just in this truck where I've had to grab that IFAC and and uh, in one case use it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, in, in our situation, we are at. It's it's not at, a if, it's a when, yeah, and yeah. it doesn't. And my wife was always like, I don't need that in my. And then she was like, Did you put a med kit in my car? And I'm like, right. Why? And like, my friend Christina cut her arm like real bad. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 yeah. There's one. It's here. Yeah. <laughs> and and then she was like, Okay, I'm sorry for like giving you. But even if you're not a sort of certified first responder it's good to have these kits it's gonna have everything you need in it and in our situation I was at King of Hammers when there was an accident and there were Navy corpsmen in our group and my vehicle just happened to be the closest one to the accident while their kits were back in their rigs another couple hundred yards away so being able to just grab it even if it's not your purpose to use it it's nice yeah to have. I, I almost every time there was somebody else that had more experience there yeah like really quick um, the motorcycle accident I talked about in my last video, you know, the first guy on the scene had just gotten off and he's a fireman paramedic. He just got off work. He was driving home. Right. And he came up behind me and was like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a fireman. I was like, cool, here you go. And he's like, do you have another tourniquet? I'm like, do you? And he's like, N no, I don't. Right. <laughs> like, I, I actually do. It's in my bike. And I ran back to the bike and got one and it was a bad broken leg accident. But yep. you're right. You might not be the one using it, but it's there. Yep. So for those others to use. You should go and get a minimal amount of training at the very least. But yeah. don't let the fact that you feel like you're not trained enough stop you from getting one of these on board because they end up being used. Oh, what rack did you say this was? This is the Pioneer platform from Rhino Rack. We've used these on a lot of different builds. Yeah. This one mounts right up to the risers that came with the uh, the riser kit with for Free Spirit Recreation um, to give us the other elevation. So this went right to their platform. And then from that platform, if you take off the tent, you can put paddle boards, whatever you need to put on it. I mean, yeah. It's a platform. So you can have tons of storage. You can store it I mean, with us with the added elevation. We can still store stuff underneath of it as well and mount it from that direction. Um, there's extrusions all over this channels to mount anything you need. I really want a rhino rack on my truck. Yep. Someday. Um, and then. KC lights, I see. KC lights um, for task around definitely throws more than enough light for what you're going to need for camp. Maybe is it just like light. ah <laughs> when you turn because you got lights. I mean, there's two on each side. Right. That's a lot of light, man. Two in the back. Yeah, two on every side. Yeah, on all four sides. Um, so you definitely can throw some light around camp, um, which is nice. You know, if you're using it um, with the Switch Pro system, you can. Uh, turn that on from inside the tent from your phone with the Bluetooth. And so if you hear something scratching at night, you know, you're elevated, but just light the whole thing yeah, up. You just light the whole joint up. That's yeah. awesome. And then you went with the uh, Free Spirit Recreation tent. Yep. Now, this is one of the biggest ones. I've stayed in this one, not this one, but I've stayed in a tent right. of the same size at Elk Camp. Yep. It's the one that's on the back of my truck. And uh, wow, dude. Yeah. Like, wow. They this, make they make for the money. I'm gonna I'm gonna break a lot of hearts here for you tent guys, but for the money, change my mind. I don't think you can find a better tent. Like the fact that they're lined was huge to me. Insulated, yep. And oh, uh -huh. not all of them, but you can get the insulating packages for most of the tents. Yeah, the ones I like, the one I've stayed, the ones I've stayed in. Like I stayed in your Odyssey. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed in my friend Ali's. You know tent that's just like this same size and everything and at elk camp it was like it was like my own kingdom i loved right. it so much and i would get up in there and guys were man it, we had some 
bad cold nights, wind blowing, snow. I'm just up there like, I can't, I'm so comfortable up here. I had a little iPad and it's just yeah. like lights inside and everything. You still need to crack, crack a window. Yeah, a yeah, it's yeah. still like, oh, it's, I'm warm. Plenty like, warm. Really warm. And this is one of the biggest ones that they have, if not the biggest one they have. Um, and this fits uh, Troy's family of five. They oh, can, wow. They can squeeze in this. And this while the kids are little. You know, adults is a different story. But um, yeah. it's plenty, plenty big. Plenty big. Um, yeah, I stayed in that one once just with my daughter, though. Mm -hmm. And it, it was my daughter back then. Like, she likes to, you know, sleep. Pick the wrong way to sleep in a bed, and that's the way she's going to sleep. But she, she was like folded up Little in the corner. Jimmy leg. <laughs> yeah, she was like folded up in the corner, and I'm just like, cool, okay. I'm just like you're way over there. But yeah, I, I would think uh, my wife and a kid, no problem. Oh yeah, you, you know. And then when they get older, you put them in a ground tent. They'll be fine. <laughs> you probably wouldn't even cross paths with them in the middle of the night. Yeah. Big well, let's uh, let's go around to the back and uh, check that out. Okay. So here on the back. Um, Here's where you really get to see the additional storage I was talking about. By yeah, having, this rack is awesome. By having the risers, it allows you for all this. And we just went with some Rhino Rack crossbars uh, to the tracks that were already mounted on the trailer. And then we were able to add this basket, which right now we just have the water lashed in, but you can put some salt bags in here, um, whatever you need. Also, what we do occasionally is we'll take the basket out and you can also mount boards, surfboards, things like that oh. um, in here. Man, is this is nice. such I didn't think of it. This is such a cool beach rig. Yeah. <laughs> like with or without the tent. Yeah. Just cruising this thing to the beach for a day with the family. All your gear. Awesome. Yep. Dang. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> the more I talk about this thing, the more I want to buy one. Um but then the other part that blew me away was this storage is insane. Like yep. the amount of storage you have in here is yep. so in the other door which you which you couldn't see because the batteries were stacked there and behind the batteries were the slide out for the fridge, uh, which takes up the front nose portion of the trailer. Probably mm -hmm. the first third of the trailer is, is those two items. So here you can really get to see the amount of storage that you have. This is I think roughly a four by six box. Um, so in here we just have a bunch of random ge uh, gear, our Scottle um, is in there from Timbo Tusk, uh, you know, various tools, but this thing, changes all the time depending on what we're doing yeah so right now it's it, it plays partially some storage as well at home and then we just swap out what we need what we don't need and it will fit a yeti 160 elk hunters <laughs> like not a problem well actually you could put a yeti you could put your coolers up here if you wanted to yep. but yetis are expensive yep. i hate putting a yeti in the back of my truck whenever i have to it's like because I just know guys want to steal or any nice, yeah. you know, even a good, the really good igloo coolers are expensive and guys just, guys will just take them. Yeah, stuff that um, legs easily. To be able to throw it inside this Lock it. and still have a ton of room yeah. was, was uh, it spoke to me. I, yeah. I liked it very much. Um, it's cool, all these little mounting options. You could, I see you got a little ram mount here. Yep. We covered it with ram mounts. There's there's a slight chance I might have pillaged one or two off of that for another vehicle. For the van. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can mount whatever you need to those the cameras, uh, speaker holders. Oh. We use the OE, OM, uh, OE booms, mm -hmm. you know, so they have a threaded mount on the bottom and we'll just attach it to that. We can put a couple of those around the trailer just to throw some sound around campsite. So, I mean, the sky's the limit with the ram mount stuff. That's awesome. Uh, let's go to the other side. This has got to be the. He likes this. This has got to be the dopest bungee cord I've ever seen. I it's mean, actually, the perfect bungee cord. Is that what they're called? That's what they're you called. Serious? <laughs> I mean, the fact you can do that and just like yeah, loop it into itself wherever and adjust it is. I mean, it's pretty nice. Really nice. How do these hold up over time? Probably better than a normal bungee. Well, you're looking at one that's probably five years old. It's oh. sitting outside. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Where do I get these? Perfect Bungee. Perfectbungee.com. There you go, Perfect Bungee. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm sure we could figure out the whole tag thing. Yeah, we could maybe. We could do something really bad. Like, I'm always like, link in the description. I never have a link in the right. description. But if they're on <laughs> Amazon, they'll be in my Amazon store. All proceeds go to Samaritan's Purse. Um, okay, moving on to this side. One, 
I have this same uh, quick release fire extinguisher mm -hmm. on my truck and I've used it. I used it at the range because we're shooting and doing, anyway, I can't talk about it, but we're testing things and we lit fire and the guys started and it wasn't working. And I went to my truck and grabbed mine and used my fire extinguisher, then realized I had to replace my fire extinguisher, which is not yeah. cheap, but That's worth its weight for sure. Yep. Um, Much like the med kit. You may yeah. not be a firefighter, however. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a nice thing. Um, and then lightener. Like, how'd you get yep. lightener in here? Uh, this is off a lightener rack, yes? Yep, yep, exactly. This is one of their pods. Uh, and we ended up using this for additional storage since we already had the Rhino Rack load bars, which go through the entire underside of the trailer. We did get them long enough to extend out the sides so we can then um, add some additional storage with the uh, lightener pod. So generally what we'll keep in here is, is, is some kitchen gear and things like that. And we can hang all of our utensil bags off the off the pod. Um, like I said, it's limitless. You can, so fit, you can fit golf clubs in this. Got thing. the got the the Romer <laughs> beer can over there. Got to have that. Important. Actually, I like how you strung that. I'm gonna steal that idea. That's a good right. idea. To keep you from actually stealing this. Yeah. Um, the, these tons of dry storage. Yeah. So. so good. These things are great. Like when I saw this on that side, I was like, oh, that's really smart. Yep. Um, it's cool having a platform you can do so much with. Right. Like you guys really have an awesome imagination how you like, oh, what if we did this here? What right. if we did that there? Like so, it's all things I wouldn't have thought of. Right. So this is this is underneath the bat wing from Rhino Rack as well. So this oh, is the... Oh, forgot. I believe they're 270, they call it, and it wraps around. We'll go from this side, throw shade all the way on this side, around to the opposite side corner of oh. uh, the trailer. So you'll have shade in, entirely on this side. And then being high enough, we actually rose this up a little bit. So you could stand under it and I could see even at your um, yeah I'm 6'4 and height. no no problem it won't be hitting me so you can have your kitchen on this side um, what you'll see here is the fridge side so everything is on all the business is going on over here as far as camp cookie and all that good stuff mm -hmm. um, under shade and out of the weather I mean technically with the tent erected and this out you're shaded all, all the way, way around, around. this hall. yep that's awesome. The, the tent is folding out the other side. Mm -hmm. So wow. that can create, or does create a shower area because that's where the shower is on that side as well. So you can then pull a curtain around the bottom underside of the tent and create a changing room, a shower, whatever you need on that Man, side. Man, that's so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, another outer limits box just for accessories, I take yep. it? This one we just keep all of our, uh, because they're waterproof, this is where we just keep some of our air chucks and, and random things like that. Uh, here on this side, but use it for however you want to use it. And I mean, you could put your ARB dual compressor on here. Yep. You could put, I mean, you've got a power tank, which is rad. Pretty nice, <laughs> pretty nice. Power tanks are awesome, but like, if you got problems waiting to air up tires, just go get yourself a power tank and air up them 40s or 37s. I saw a guy with 40s airing it up and there was a dude with a huge compressor and that guy and he was just like i gotta go and he walked and he was just like done yeah. i'm like what the frick like yeah. how much were you? and he was like i was at 20. now i'm at 35. I'm like yeah wow. no time at all if you have a uh you know not even through a standard valve it'll be pretty fast but if you have an upgraded valve monster valve on your wheels they have monster valves they have monster valves where you you can move a lot of volume really quickly That's and rad. you can get you can get a tire you know filled up from from 10 12 uh, pounds all the way up to 35 40 and i don't know it was something ridiculous like 12 14 seconds <laughs> so That's ridiculous dumb. <laughs> so, and this guy had this was a really nice jeep and yeah you know, he, he, he was in a rush. He got back and he's like, he was, I, I came outside my, it was a crew that was with Rob. And so it was like one of those Jeep builds, you know? And, and the guy just like got his power tank and started walking around with it. And it, it was like that. He must've had those monster valves in there cause it was fast. It was fast, yeah. Um, and then of course, shovel. Gotta have a shovel. Who knows? You gotta have a shovel, <laughs> have an ax. Um, I've heard about guys also wiring these into so they charge off of the truck or off the van yep. as well? Yep, totally possible. 
yeah. um, to do that so it takes a trickle. Or, you know, you can get a kit that will add even more charging That's capacity awesome. uh, if you want to do that. Sky's the kind of limit on that and what you want to get into to how complex you want to make the setup. Yeah, this is... Well, thanks for sharing this, man. And, and hopefully for y'all out there, normal folk who, you know, maybe you're into overlanding, maybe you're into hunting, maybe you're into going surfing, going to the beach, or just having that outdoor lifestyle. That's why I wanted to share this with you guys because there's options. And yep. these options are a lot cheaper than you think. Um, I would, I would, you know, I think it's... And this is not that big. The biggest no. problem with the trailers is where they put them. This will fit into, right now as it sits, it fits into most of our garages. Mm -hmm. um, it, for my garage, I need to take a little bit of air out of the tires, but even with the tent, it'll scoot right in yeah. and get it out of the weather. And you're not paying for storage someplace else, but it has everything you need. Yeah, it was, uh, it pulled right into my garage at Arrowhead, like no problem. Yep. Um, and it's so light, I was pushing it in myself. Yep. Like, like, this is yep. crazy. Like yep. you can really move them around on your own kind of, which is, which is great, but it's a cool option for, you know, the person who doesn't want to have all this, all this, you know, accoutrements and maybe you just want to go camping with your family, um, which is, you know, what I'm looking to do when my daughter gets a little older. I think she's still kind of too young to enjoy that camping, which is why I like doing it on the motorcycle right now, which is the exact opposite of this. <laughs> but one of these, to be able to just hook it up, and go is it just speaks to me. I don't have to add anything to my truck. I don't have to drive around all week with a rooftop tent, right. which does hurt your gas mileage for sure. Yep. I would be willing to bet my gas mileage was worse with this tent on top of my truck than it is my truck towing this little itty bitty trailer that weighs nothing. And it's so small that being stored in your own garage at home for the last 25% of gearing it up for a trip you're doing it in your PJs inside. Yeah. Like you're I mean, not it's outside just like, packing up. Yeah, packed up, ready to go. You pack the truck up, hook it up, and then you're out. Like add ice, go, yeah. like add ice. go yeah. you know? Um, especially with the fridge. The fridge thing was like, that was a new revelation I had at yeah. camp where I was like, I can do this. Some of the niceties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, go check out I Am Romer. Is that your YouTube and your Instagram? Uh, yeah, Romer. Romer and uh, R-O-A-M-R. -R. Check them out. They've got tons of crazy, amazing rigs. And uh, and if you have any questions on this trailer, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. If I don't know, I'll call Tony. And he's you're pretty good at answering the phone. Would, Unlike my yeah. other friends, Josh. Um, I'm a good phone answer. You are a good phone answer. So hope you enjoyed it, guys. Check out the Amazon store. I'll try to put some of this stuff in there. Like and subscribe if you liked this. Let me know, and I'll make more of them. God bless. See you guys.